everybody, uh, Kyle Hagen here from Conga. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about <coughs> Salesforce and how we can help you with your data using our tool, Conga Action Grid. So I'm going to go through a quick demo, and then we're going to have a Q&A after we're done. So uh, let's get started. So if, if, if people haven't seen our tool before, what we're trying to accomplish with Action Grid is we're trying to give you that list view look and feel with the action ability of an Excel sheet. So you can see right off the bat, we have the similarities between a list view, you know, account name, owners, all these column headers with the ability to sort and the ability to filter inside of this grid. But when we're talking about your data inside of Salesforce, what's really important is three things. The integrity of your data, the ability to act on your data, and the ability, the ability to view your data the way you want to see it. So I'm going to start with the data integrity. So in, in Salesforce, using this system for tracking data, we want to make sure all the data is correct. So Action Grid as a tool can help us do that. One way is we, if we need to change things on the fly very quickly as like an admin or maybe an account manager, we can actually quickly filter on certain aspects of the accounts. So we're on an accounts grid right now. I can say, let's say maybe Amy's leaving the company. I'm going to filter by Amy. I can then inline edit the data I'm seeing here, right? Maybe I want to say, change the transfer these accounts to Kyle or myself. Then I'm going to use our batch fill down functionality in the lasso that you saw there to actually change these records. Now I can save these records inside of Salesforce. And what would normally take me about 10 to 15 minutes inside of Salesforce it just took me 30 seconds inside of Action Grid. And now we'll see that no, no longer is Amy the owner of any of these accounts. One of the other aspects of data integrity that's really important is making sure that all of the relationships are respected. So when someone creates an account, making sure that they have contacts or opportunities associated with the account so it can actually be useful. Um, in here, you can already see that I have a contacts column, and some of, these, some of these accounts don't have contacts. So what we can do with Action Grid is quickly using our cross-object filter functionality, filter on accounts where contacts did not exist, and now I have a view of all my accounts where information needs to be fixed, or someone needs to go in and actually change what's here or add contacts, right? And from this grid, I can actually batchify the process of adding tasks by batch adding tasks or chatter to actually assign things to people to say, hey, come fix this. Please change this data or fix this data, right? From the same very, very same view, I can actually create a view for my end users to actually be able to fix this data by filtering on a dynamic my filter inside of the owner column, which is going to show me just my accounts then by adding our reading pane over here. And the reading pane is going to be able to show us related records for the currently selected record on the left, right? So what I can do in here is I can actually add contacts in line. But that's still a little bit uh, slow. So let's say we have a list of contacts for all these corps, or these, all these accounts, and I just forgot to do it, right? Uh, what I can do as, a <coughs> as an end user is click on a grid of contacts. Now we switched over to a grid of contacts. And then I can use functionality that will allow us to take an Excel sheet right here. I'll show you copy data out of the Excel sheet, click into a cell inside of Action Grid, and then paste. And that's going to add a new record for each of the contacts that we had, respecting all the companies they have, right? So that can be a quicker way to add a bunch of contacts than going through each, con each account in a row. <clears throat> this functionality is nice because think of it as a mass update tool where you can, say, have take backsies, right? Where if we don't like this data, we can actually revert it, and it'll go back to where it was. But if we do have that data in line, as soon as we click the Save button, and this is me using keyboard shortcuts, or sorry, paste. Oops, let me go back and give that one more time. Copy, paste. Hmm. But anyway, when we go in and save these records, what will happen is we'll actually go through this normal Salesforce DML and actually hit all your validation rules, hit all your triggers, everything that's important to you that you've taken time to set up inside of your org to make sure that the data is, again, really, really clean and healthy. <clears throat> Another really cool thing we can do from this contacts view is actually batchify the process of doing things that normally take a while in Salesforce. One of the examples we can do is shifting gears a little bit. Um, it, let's say we're uh, using campaigns to manage who we want to come to certain events or things like that. So what I can do here is select a set of contacts using our lasso functionality again. And I can actually use out-of-box functionality from the grid tool to batch add campaign members. So right here you can see I have a bunch of campaigns that are active, right? I can actually click one or more of the campaigns, set status for all the members, right? And then I can create campaign members. Had success, no duplicates or errors. And then if I open the reading pane here, you can actually see that now all of these people are part of that campaign. So what would, again, normally take me a while inside of Salesforce is something I can do from Action Grid in seconds. 
Now shifting to an opportunities page when we're talking about um, <clears throat> the addition of like you know creating um, mass or I'm sorry batchifying the process of taking actions which can increase productivity, we can actually use Action Grid to manage opportunities in a very very um, very quick way. So let's say these opportunities here, and you can notice sorry uh, there's conditional formatting here for things that we really care about like high prices or, or high amounts and close dates that we care about and. Uh, activity dates that really need to be focused on. We can actually see things on the right hand side too like opportunity products for the selected opportunity. But let's say we want to add a new opportunity product to all four or all five of these or six of these opportunities, right? I can actually again use batch add functionality to add opportunity products by selecting a product, selecting a quantity, and even putting in a description and clicking OK. That'll, oops, that'll uh, create the, uh, <laughs> the thing over here. So this will add the opportunities to all the opportunity products to all the opportunities on the right. Another way we can do that is by using our unrelated list technology, right? So if I click on a product, the product picker here, I can actually show a list of price book entries that aren't yet associated with the opportunity on the left. Then I can select a few of these column of these uh, products that we'd want to add here, right? Like maybe they want standard widget and they want to have premium consulting plans. Then I can actually using the batch add functionality add opportunity products to the currently selected opportunity by selecting quantity and going through. And now when we come back here, you'll see that. Those things have been added. We have a standard widget and the premium consult platinum consulting plan. So really quickly, we can actually go through and add and add the uh, the products normally, which would take a long time. So one of the other really great things we can do with Action Grid to batchify the process of organizing your opportunities is we can do grouping. So much like a tabular summary report, we can take a column header and quickly replicate those reports by grouping these these uh, opportunities, right? <clears throat> One from a from a management perspective, or maybe an executive perspective, now we can act on groups of opportunities. Let's say we want to push things from the decision make or from the needs analysis stage to the next step. I can select a group of these by clicking the grouping header, and now again I can do the batch add chatter, batch add tasks, or even send emails out that will allow me to contact these owners and say, "Hey, let's move these to the next step. Let's do something here where we can actually, <clears throat> you know, act on this data and make it so we can move these so into our sales process further." <clears throat> But one of the last things we want to talk about is, is data visibility. So being able to view the things that are important to you and making sure that they're interactable. So if we go back to the accounts level here, let me revert this data. We can actually see that on the right hand side, now that we have this filter here, we don't see any contacts. Let me fix that. So we clear that really quickly. You notice how we're doing this stuff on the fly. It's not taking me very much time. Normally a list view, this would take a pretty long time where you'd have to go into a separate, separate area and change some, some filter settings. So. But what we can see on the right here is if we click on an account, like ABC Distribution Company, we can see the contacts like we said earlier. But if I click on this Opportunities tab, you can actually see that I have opportunities and then in the same pane, I have their products as well. So on the, on, in this whole area, I'm seeing three levels of visibility here, which can be really nice when you're trying to manage lots of different things at once. So if I click on an opportunity here, the products will change associated with the opportunity. And if I click on a different, <coughs> a different account, you'll see that that changes as well. So when you're trying to visit, view everything, if you're especially moving this into a process with our other tools like Composer or Conductor, you can make sure that the data that's going into your document is good before you push it into that merging process. So another way we can use data visibility is by <clears throat> making sure that things like call lists and lead lists for our salespeople have the, the proper appropriate information in the reading pane or like something in like it would be like a related list. So you'll notice as I click on these as I click on these uh, contacts on the left, you'll see that they have tasks assigned to them, and I can actually modify their tasks description here, which can be really important when you're talking about tracking data. So if I have things like an email that needs to be put in the description, or maybe I need to create a new task that said I left a message and here's what the message was, I can do that on the fly in this area here that lets me edit the description of this task. I can also add new tasks in line too. Just again, we're getting back to that mass functionality in a second. But these new tasks will have a description that I can decide. And then I can, you know, create the due date, all that kind of stuff in line. So as we go through here, you'll notice this is really fast. Click and call. I can change the status to completed because it was a call. And then I click save. And that'll save that task in line here. So now we have a new task. I wrote this. That's the task. But let's say someone needs to create a bunch of tasks for some contacts that they've contacted today. To note that they've made a call, you know, to keep track. That way when management comes and looks at these contacts or these accounts, they can see that they've, there's been action on them, right? We can actually batch add tasks here as well. So if I do this, this is batchifying that task process, like I was saying before, from the opportunities and the accounts level. 
but I can assign these tasks to the owners, right? Or so me, in this case. I can call, I can say it was a call, and I can say left message, right? So this is increasing the ability for people to actually use the CRM or Salesforce the way that they want to and make sure that these things that normally take a long time and they're cumbersome don't really end up stopping people from using the system. So now when we go in here, we can see that I added that task to each one of these records. So an another thing that's really positive about this is that if you have people that are already using page layouts because they like the way that the data is viewed on there, we can actually work inside of that system as well. So when I come back to opportunities here, if I come up to the top and click view if you go to this page layout, a little snowman there for Winter 17 if you guys haven't seen that yet. And then you'll notice that after this page loads, we'll see this action grid related list here. So some of the stuff we're doing from that opportunities related list area, we can actually do from here as well like, you know, use the product picker or see activities that are currently selected from this opportunity. One more note on data visualization is if we're in an opportunities area or anywhere that has a number that we really care about, we can actually use this to visualize data in a um, <clears throat> more graph or chart style way by using our quick graph, quick graph functionality. So what we can do is we can drag a field here that we want to see and we can actually display that field. Sorry. Right? So now what we're seeing is we're seeing a graph for all the opportunities amounts, right? With their names if we hover over them. So dynamically we can change that by selecting different records in line. And that'll show us different amounts over here. One of the more powerful things we can do here is actually group again. So if we group by stage again, what'll happen is now we'll see a grouping totals. So we'll see grouping totals for closed loss, closed one, all the stuff we want to see visually that we can change dynamically on the fly. So when it comes to data visualization, the tool is meant to help you interact with your data. <clears throat> so I think that's all I have today, folks, and we're going to go into questions now. I think there's one or two questions here. But um, yeah, so um, keep typing them if you have them, and I'm just going to go through this list. So uh, one of the first questions we have is, can I, as an admin, have the availability to perform specific field auditing, i.e. tracking field changes and who made those changes? <clears throat> and thanks for the compliment, by the way. <clears throat> He's a brilliant tool. Uh, yeah, so what we can do here is there's a few ways we can actually track changes in Action Grid. Um, we have access to all the fields that you normally have inside of Salesforce, right? So if I go to this configure area, right, this is going to be where I can change and add things to the grid. There's two ways that we can do tracking. If you have, uh, if you want to do just basic tracking, we can do last modified by and, and date to see who is changing the data last, right? That way we can say, look at, you know, who made the last modification and what date they made it on. But another really cool thing we can do is if you have field tracking on, you can actually use chatter and see that in the related related area in the reading pane to see like what types of changes have been made on the account, or in this case, the account. So you can actually track that stuff using chatter as well, which is a really powerful tool, you know, to be able to say who did what. And this, this is how we do stuff internally to track like changes in accounts and licensing and opportunities. So Another question we have is, uh, do you need to be on Lightning? Or does it work with Classic? And yes, um, this tool is just using Visual Force page. That's why we can put it in things like a Salesforce tab or in a page layout, like I showed you earlier. It doesn't require you to be in Lightning at all. It just it'll it just goes wherever a Visual Force page goes and can exist. So there's not any limitations on where you can use it or like in what systems you can use it. We can even do things inside of portals or communities as well, as long as you set up the sharing rules for the Visual Force pages and the tabs. All right. Another question we have is regarding the AG and the related lists of an object, for instance, in the accounts object. We have several related lists associated to the account. Can you have <coughs> an AG for each one of those related lists? So if I understand this correctly, I think what you're asking for is, let me see. So I think what you're asking is we can have several related lists over here, right? So if we have this, this is contacts, this is opportunities, right? So we can see all of those in this reading pane area using the same functionality that we normally do. So if we click here, you can actually add related lists to the to the reading pane. So we can do, you know, cases or or any types of like, you know, <clears throat> orders we have for this account. We can add all that stuff in here and all it requires us to do is is change that stuff from the configure area. So yeah, so the functionality is there as well. If we want to do something on a page layout, um, let me go back to that page layout area. We just do it a little differently. So in our Action Grid setup, we have wizards for creating these Visual Force pages. One of the wizards will build you these top level Salesforce tabs that we have up here. And another wizard will actually build you these related lists, right? And so these related lists here 
are once you've built them they're they're a little bit static you go into the visual force to change them again or you can use the wizards to make new ones but these have the same functionality that we would have on a normal grid where we can actually click here and add related lists in in the reading pane for these as well so if i go to this uh, sorry if i go to this products and let's say we have um uh, revenue schedules for these products we can see those here or if i go to quotes i can see quote line items in, in the reading pane as well so everywhere you have a grid, you have the full functionality of the grid, which is really nice because you're not losing functionality anywhere you go. You kind of maintain the same usability wherever you decide to put these. Um, one other question is how the licensing works. So <clears throat> one of the, the, the things we do is we have a per user per license or a per a cost per user per year. So basically you pay for a year and we have uh, 10 license, um, up to 10 license minimum that you go through when you when you go through the purchase product but we can uh, if you have any questions about that I'm, <laughs> we can have you set up a call with the salesperson and hopefully we can get you figured out for the the, the costs and things like that uh, okay i see what you're talking about darren uh he says darren's clarifying his question from earlier that says for related list que related list question i was trying to picture ag within the existing native salesforce related list of an account so like so it's different than the way we do it here right so if we have the related section which we don't have um again it is a visual force page so it's limited to where visual force pages can go and i don't believe that visual force pages can be put inside of a related list but again what we'd be showing you here is the exact same thing you'd see in all of those related lists so we're just doing the tabular structure instead of the scroll up and down so as you go across here you'd be basically scrolling up and down to see those inside of salesforce Yeah, exactly. So in, in Lightning, he, as he said, the detail section of the layout. Yeah, that's true. So it, it, the way we have it now, it's just the visual force. So it goes into the details section as a visual force page. We are working on a Lightning component that will help people uh, do it with a normal native, na native app builder. So you can just use it as a component instead of using it as a visual force page. Um, someone else had a question about deleting. So you can actually delete things as well. So uh, that's a function we have turned on. So if I didn't want this, this opportunity, we have the ability to delete from here as well. So if I delete that, it'll go away. It gives you a warning because deleting can be scary sometimes. So that's always a, a good thing too. You're stopping people before it gets too far. Uh, I think the component's coming out by December, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but that would be something you could set up a call with one of our people to actually uh, talk about. <coughs> uh, yeah, mass delete. So, uh, sorry, Maria asked about mass deleting. You can select as many records as you want. And since we're just using the actions here, you can actually delete as many records as you have selected. Um, all right. Um, I'm not sure when. Uh, I'm not sure when the recording of the session will be getting out. Probably by the end. Of, uh, probably by tomorrow. So it'll be they're pretty available pretty quick. Uh, one of the other things I do like to touch on here is um, the respect the respect of what, the, what you've done in Salesforce. So if, if uh, you guys have dependent pick lists, we'll respect those inside of our tool. So right here I have interaction types, right? So this is how I'm interacting with the account. And then this relationship is the pick list that's associated, that's dependent on the interaction type. And you can see if I have new, these are the list values I get. If I have existing, here's the list values I get. So as we go through here, we respect all your dependent pick lists and record type pick lists as well. So yeah, um, let's see, any more questions at all? All right. Well, as for, for some more functionality that I think is really, really kind of interesting too, um, one of the things we can use this tool for is to do really creative mass updating. So normally mass update tools are meant for changing a bunch of data at once. But let's say that we're on an opportunity, right? And what we want to do is we want to create, we want to push a bunch of opportunities out one month. So using Action Grid formula fields right here, we can actually create a formula that will do something like that. So I can say I want to create a formula that's formatted as date. This is going to be close date update. <clears throat> then I'm going to select the field from our formula chooser, which is going to be close date, and I'm going to add a month to it, right? So all I have to do is click that and type 1. There's a lot of functionality in the formula and conditional format builders. So if you want to use our helpful tools, you can, but also you see it uses JavaScript. So if you're, if you're a savvy JavaScript user, you can write crazy things in here. I'm going to click apply and what that's going to do is it's going to create that formula field on the right here so but i can use this formula field now to do is let's say i want to move these four opportunities to the next to, to to the next month i can actually batch edit and mass update in order to use that formula i just built 
to actually update those values inside of Salesforce. So if I click OK here, it's going to do what a mass update tool does and actually change those. So now they're all a month out. So that can be really helpful when you want to do dynamic updates. Instead of just updating everything to the same value, you can use a formula field to do updates on the current value, That's, which is kind of a powerful tool. And then if we are done with that formula, we can delete it or we can keep it as a separate view we want to have. So one of the cool things about Action Grid is that we have the ability to save views, much like list views, which means that you can share them with certain users and you can put them in different pages and you can have different people seeing different things inside your system. Yeah, so uh, uh, there's a good question asked about functional or feature security. So dele deleting records, what if you don't want people to be able to delete records? Uh, I'm going to delve into the admin area of Action Grid real quick. This is that setup area I was talking about earlier. If we click into one of the objects on the left, you can see that we have a fully like functional suite of wizards and account features and field securities and things like that. So if I go into our global defaults area and go to feature security, you can actually see that all of the features in Action Grid are here, and they're all able to be enabled and disabled on the, the all users profile and user level. So if I wanted to turn batch delete off, you know, I could turn it off, and then I could go into the profile and I can actually turn it on for sysadmins, so only certain profiles can see it, or I can turn it on for specific users that I want to see it, right, or be able to use it. And so, yeah. No, uh, as I was saying earlier, um, there's no limitations. If someone asked about classic Salesforce, are there any limitations again? Um, no, there's no limitations. Since all of the functionality is coming from the Visual Force page, there's nothing that is limiting you when you're in Lightning or outside of Lightning. So if you can load a grid as a Visual Force page, you can use all the functionality of the grid. <laughs> it's okay. No, that's fine. That's why it's, that's cool. So um, does anybody have any questions about anything else or um, have any questions about it? We work with standard and custom objects, so you don't have to worry about that. You can see in this list here of objects, there's you know, every object I have in my org. So the Conga specific objects, the Action Grid specific objects, and the standard objects out of box. So you don't have to worry about it, you know, not working or working with certain things. And to help on that kind of front of this is a new tool, it's 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 similar to list views, but it's not a list view. We actually have things that can help you move a system into an action grid system as opposed to just having to do it on your own. As I said before, there's these wizards here that you can use to actually <clears throat> build out action grids without having to know any visual force at all. You can actually convert list views you already have into action grid views, which is really helpful when you're trying to like, you know, move people into a new system that's similar but different. And from the, this top level in the global defaults area, we have the ability to convert reports, we have the ability to, to look at your org and see which stuff you're using most and build grids out of it, or we have the ability to change over a Salesforce app into an action grid, which will take all of the list viewed available av objects available for a list view and turn them into action grids with all of those list views as action grid views. So really powerful stuff here when you're talking about tra or translating an org over. We can make it really, really easy to do. And with the import export tool, if you're an admin working in a sandbox or anywhere else, you can actually move this stuff you've built with action grid into your production org without any, with any worry at all. So that's really helpful when you're talking about not having to use change sets and things like that. Our tool is internal to itself, so you don't have to worry about all the confusion of moving everything around. So uh, I like to thank everybody for um, stopping by today. Thanks for the great questions.